All right, welcome everybody. Um, so I'm at Leadership 2015 Leadership Retreat down in San Diego or Coronado, California. Um, one of my favorite places ever and the Leadership Retreat is always awesome. I love the Leadership Retreat. Beast love leadership. <laughs> See, I knew Lisa would get that. There you go. Um, but one of the reasons I love leadership is because um, at Summit, it's huge and it gets bigger every year. Like this year at Summit was ridiculous if you all were there, 25, 20 to 25,000 people and we barely get time to just be with the team, much less to see all of your other friends from other teams and to actually get some intimate talking about, you know, leadership things or talking about um, how to do the business or anything like that. It's very high level. A lot of times, a lot of the... Uh, the sessions that we have are more based on newer coaches and things like that. We don't get into leadership. That's what the leadership retreat is for, is to talk about leadership. And so I enjoy that. I get to see some of my buddies, uh, other elite coaches and five stars and various things like that. Um, but they also bring in speakers just like they do at Summit. And a lot of times they're very good and uh, sometimes not so much. Um, we did have the DeWitt Jones that we had at Summit. We had him at Leadership last year. He did the exact same talk, and he was amazing, and that's probably why they brought him to Summit. Um, we ha we've had some other people that have been, eh, you know, not so good. But we had a guy for the Elite Mastermind today, which is a session only for elite coaches. And what they used to do with that session is they used to talk about a lot of the same metrics, a lot of the same things that they would talk about in the regular leadership sessions with the elites, and then the elites would go to the regular leadership and be like, I already know this. We just did this yesterday in the elite only session. So they changed it up and they decided to bring in a speaker specifically for the elite coaches and, and have this guy talk. And this guy um, spent 15 years as the co-CEO of Primerica, which is another multi-level marketing company, a direct marketing company that uh, is one of the largest multi-level marketing companies in the world. And uh, he led them through a whole bunch of, uh, very difficult times and things like that. And so he had some words for us. And right now he's working with Success Magazine and he just wrote a book and all this stuff. Uh, his name's Addison, John Addison. Um, and he was a wonderful speaker. And I thought some of the things that he brought to the table were just awesome. So I thought I would share those with you. I'll try to get through this fairly quickly. But um, there's just some things that, uh, first of all, when I'm talking about these things, that one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this to everybody is because I felt called out myself in some of these leadership sessions with this guy um, in this talk. And so as I'm going through this stuff, um, one of the things that I want to say is that I'm not saying these things like, let me explain to you guys what you need to do and what I'm already doing. And you guys just need to do these things or something like that. These are things that I struggle with. These are things that I am struggling with as a leader of a team. The things I'm struggling with as uh, doing business, um, and, and I felt called out. And so when I'm talking about these, let's talk, uh, let me talk to you about this as one of your peers, not as your uh, leader who's preaching to you. Okay. So I'm not preaching to you today. I'm, I'm saying, let's all think about these things together. Let's be all on the same level and talk about these together. Okay. So the first thing that he said to us, he said, you're not going to change human nature. If you're dealing with people, you're dealing with challenges. So if you expect it to be easy, then you're doing it wrong, okay? It's going to be hard. This is going to be difficult. If you're going to build a big business with Beachbody, if you're going to do anything that is worth talking about with Beachbody, it's going to be difficult because you're dealing with people, and that creates challenges just in and of itself. So maybe that's not news to you. It wasn't really news to me, but it's always good to hear that. But then he said, okay, so what are you going to do about those challenges? Here, here are some of my top tips for you. Number one, he said, you got to win in your head before you can win in life. So just let that sink in for a moment. When, I, when he said it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's personal development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have the right mindset and everything. And that's all stuff that we hear all the time. Maybe you haven't heard that, but I've heard it a million times. But the way he said it, you've got to win in your head before you win, you are going to be able to win in life. Napoleon Hill said, thoughts are things. And your most dominant thought is what you are becoming. So I highlighted that in my notes. Your most dominant thought is what you are becoming. So I sat there and thought, what, what is my most dominant thought? What am I thinking about the most? Am, am I positive? Am I thinking about helping people? Am I thinking about uh, good things? Or am I negative? Am I thinking... Um, 
there's shipment errors going on? Or am I thinking coach relations sucks? Or am I thinking, you know, the wrong, I don't like this uh, thing that's coming out, or I don't like this piece of, of the business, or this isn't working for me. What is your most dominant thought is what you are becoming. If you are, if your thoughts are negative, if your thoughts are um, derogatory, then you're becoming a negative person. He talks a little bit more about that and how money plays into that in just a second. But you're becoming something every single day. And he has this little quote that I wrote down and highlighted. If your thinking is stinking, then your team is shrinking. (laughs) I thought that was hilarious, but also so true. If you have bad thinking, if everything's against you and everything is wrong and I don't like this and I don't like that, your team is going to shrink. Okay. So, Then he said this, the most important person to coach and lead every day is yourself. So that is, I mean, that is what we talk about with personal development, right? But we all think about, well, how can I, how can I coach my people better? How can I get out there and and find more people? How can I sell more things? How can I lead other people better? How can I become a better leader? And the, the place that we have to start is coaching and leading ourselves. And that starts with personal development and being a product of the product, right? We have those three vital behaviors and that plays right in with that. So the first person you need to coach and the first person you need to lead is yourself. So I thought that was a good thought. Um, Then he gave some tips on how to coach yourself and some things to just start off with first. And he said, the first thing is turn the TV off. (laughs) He said, you know, I'm not going to tell you that every piece of TV is bad, but he said, just turn the stupid thing off. Now, you don't have to listen to that, but that's, you know, he hit right at, you're t- he's talking to, you have to understand, he's talking to a group of people that are all really serious about building a very big business and about leading teams. And he said to all those people, turn the TV off. Now, if you're not that at that seriousness level, if you're someone who's like, I just want to make a couple hundred extra bucks, maybe you don't have to listen to that. But if you are one of those people that's like, I'm going to be on stage at Summit next year, I'm going to be an elite, I'm going to be a two-star diamond, I'm going to go diamond in the next six months, whatever, then you probably should listen to that. And I should listen to that too. I watch TV sometimes, not very much, but I do watch TV. Turn off the TV. Uh, Second thing, just smiling goes a long way. Every day on the right side of the grass is a great day. People think when this happens, I'll be happy. When uh, this new thing comes out, then I'll be happy. When size comes out, then I'll be happy because I'll have the program that I need to do this business. When um, my kids stop being brats, then I'll be happy. When my husband does this, I'll be happy. When my wife starts doing this, I'll be happy. And he said, if you're waiting for circumstances to change to make you happy, you will never be happy. Uh, he said some other things about it. I look through my notes here. Uh, did anybody have a question? Somebody have a question because somebody unmuted, I think. It's me, but I don't know. Who was that? Sorry, I, I re-muted everybody because I didn't think anybody had a question, so you're muted again. But go ahead, unmute yourself and, and ask. No, I accidentally unmuted myself and didn't know how to remute myself. Oh, okay, cool. Are you good now? All right, good. Okay, so where was I here? Uh, talking about um, not being happy until circumstances change. Okay, so then this was the one that really hits me. As he said, money amplifies whatever you already are. And I've heard this before in other ways, but the way he was saying it, you know, um, Money makes happy people happier and bitter people more bitter. And that's an interesting way to look at it because I think a lot of people think that, um, you know, if I just, if I just wasn't struggling with my bills or whatever, and they're very bitter people, right? They, they're bitter. The world's against them. Everything's a problem. And if they could just get money, then they would be happy. And what happens is that they become a richer version of that bitter person. And happy people who get more money become a richer version of that happier person. I'm sure that's not always true. We could debate that all you want, but that's what he said is it makes happy people happier and bitter people more bitter. So he says, act the way you want to feel and soon you will feel the way that you act. So you have to learn how to become a happy person before the circumstances change. You have to learn how to see 
the positive and the good before the circumstances change. Life's not about surviving adversity. It's about embracing adversity. He told this story that, interestingly, buffalo run towards a storm when a storm comes. They go towards the way that, so if the storm's coming at them, they run into the storm. Cows run away from the storm. And he said the reason that buffalo run towards the storm, and maybe they don't consciously do this, but when buffalo run towards the storm, they end up in the storm for less time because they're going the opposite direction of the way that the storm is going. And so the storm passes over them and they're in it for less time. Cows end up in the storm for longer because they keep running the same direction the storm is going and the storm keeps following them. And so they end up in it for longer. So um, he also gave a, an example of uh, Winston Churchill and the Gallipoli disaster in England, which I recommend that you look up. I'm going to go read more about it because it was an interesting story of overcoming adversity. Okay. So that was, um, you got to win in your head before you win in life. Yeah. That was his first point. Um, point number two, you got to show up and you got to always be trying to get better. Business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And this was the, this is the, um, point that I've heard over and over and over again that I want to say is you beat most people in this business by consistently showing up, consistently showing up. So a lot of people come in and we have people like this on the team all the time that will come in and they will hammer it like crazy and they will make success club the first two, three months they're in the business and they'll, and, and you, we'll put them on a team call and we'll be like, this person's doing amazing. What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. And a couple months later you see nothing from them. They're gone. Right. And then sometimes that same person will come back two months later and they'll be like, man, I don't know what I did. I didn't, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of got off track a little bit, but I'm back and they hammer it again and then they're off and then they come back sometimes two, three, four times. And eventually they don't come back, right? And if they would have come in and been consistent the whole time, not necessarily even hammering it like, you know, just killing it for those three months. If they would have taken that 12 month period where they went in and out, if they would have just been consistent and average the whole time, they would end up better than if they hammer it for two months, quit, hammer it for two months, quit. It's consistency. Think about it just like your fitness, right? What gets you the most results is by being consistent because what happens when you're not there? You don't just like not move forward. You go backwards. He said the only, the only way to coast is downhill. There's no, there's no flat coasting, at least not for very long. The only way to coast is downhill. So like when you quit working out for two or three months, guess where you're going? Downhill, right? You don't, and then you come back in, like somebody maybe come back in and they're like, yeah, I'm going to just like... I'm basically not going to eat for, for a month and I'm going to do all these workouts and everything and look at all this weight that came off me and then I quit and it all comes back on. It's that roller coaster, diet roller coaster that we talk about, the, the workout roller coaster. The same thing happens with this business. If we don't stay consistent, you can do this nice level of consistency or you can go up, down, up, down, up, down and end up at the same place or less, probably less. Okay, so good points from him on that consistency is how you beat most people in this business, just showing up consistently. Um, he talked a little bit about insecurities and how we, you know, we work with a volunteer army basically. So how do, how do people come into our business? They say, I'm in. That's it. Like there's not a whole lot else to it. There's not a whole lot of us qualifying them necessarily. I mean, you can, you can do that for sure. You can try to qualify people a little better, but pretty much people come in. And how do they get out of the business? I'm out. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So when you're dealing with, a, with, with people like that, um, you don't get to be the kind of manager that someone does that, uh, you know, that is, has employees that they get to hire and fire, right? You're not really hiring and firing. You're working with this volunteer army. And so the, these points that he's talking about are even more important. Okay. Next thing he talked about, life turns on very small decisions. It moves on the little moments where you chose to keep going when others stopped. He told a couple of stories of his life that um, I think when his book comes out, he'll go into more details on them. Um, but he can, he can kind of narrow it down. And some of us, I bet many, if not all of you, could narrow down certain things that happen in very, very short uh, or very seemingly insignificant decisions that when you look back on them could change, could, would have changed your entire life from that one decision. I think about 
um, when I was at the shipyard um, working as an engineer, well, I had the decision to take two jobs before I even started at the shipyard. I could have taken the shipyard job or I could have taken this Kiwit job where I was uh, going to build power plants traveling around the country. I took the shipyard job, which was actually less money but better benefits. And so I ended up taking the shipyard job, and that's where I met my wife. But even more detailed than that, there was a certain decision I made to call a certain person about a job within the shipyard, about going down to San Diego for a job that I technically wasn't even qualified for and shouldn't have been picked for to go. But I called him and said, I want to go because I'm bored in this job that I'm in right now. And I made the decision to call and ask, just, just to ask. And he said, yeah, sure, come on down. And I got sat next to Paula, who is now my wife. And if I would not have asked, who knows you know, what my life would be like right now? Would I be married to her? I don't know. Um, but you can narrow it down to those tiny little decisions. So what are the little decisions that you're making or not making the right decision today about your business, about your fitness, about, you know, basically, I mean, we're talking about business here. So what are those decisions related to this business that you're making or not making? There's little tiny decisions that could change huge things. So don't think that it's some kind of big thing. It turns on very small decisions. It's very easy to grow negative thoughts. It's very easy to grow the bad parts to say, this is wrong, this is bad, this is this, this is that, and, and talk about the bad stuff. But it's hard to grow the positive thoughts that lead to success. Okay? And it's some of the stuff that he said. So think about that. Those little decisions you make to not make the negative thought, to turn that around and be positive and to find the positive. And I'm not talking about ignoring things that are going wrong and not trying to fix them but I'm talking about not being the negative person that's complaining about everything, about being the one who is trying to fix it, the one who's making the decisions to do something positive today. Um, this is a big one, okay? So the next point that he made that I think is, this is where it really hit me on, uh, on this talk. Uh, he said, don't take yourself too seriously because no one else does. We're all temporary inhabitants here. There's a 100% mortality rate. In 100 years, we will all have funerals. In 100 years, every person talking on this team call right now will not be here anymore. So he said, I'd like to give people my three ups. Lighten up, grow up, and shut up. <laughs> and what he's talking about there is he has this little saying, big team, little me. Big team, little me. He actually had shirts made for one of his teams when he was in network marketing that had team in very large letters. And then down near the bottom of the shirt was me in tiny, tiny letters that you almost had to have a, a, a magnifying glass to be able to see. Um, so I, I posted this on my wall. Um, it's about me. It's about how you make other people feel. It's not about how they feel about you. It's not about how big of a deal you are. It's not about how much weight you can lift. It's not about how good you look. It's not about how great a leader you are. It's not about all those things. The, the quote I posted on my wall was, a lot of leaders do, do caring about other people like this. Enough about me, let's talk about you. How do you feel about me? <laughs> and don't, don't we do that though sometimes? I don't know if you do that, but I, I feel like I, you know, I, I have to call myself out on that a little bit because when I'm talking to someone, uh, that, that kind of stuff does happen. And I think there's a lot of people on this team that can probably relate to making it all about yourself and like, I'm kind of a big deal and that kind of stuff. And that is not what leadership is about. Leadership is not about you. It is about the way that other people, that the way that you make other people feel and how you make them feel about themselves. It's about taking that person from not feeling good about themselves to feeling good about themselves, from not feeling like they're capable to feeling like they could do it. That's part of leadership. Showing people how awesome you are is not the main part of leadership. Okay. So uh, let's see what, if there was anything else on these notes that I, big team, little me, it means making them a big deal, not making yourself a big deal, inspiring others to see what they could be, not showing them how great they, uh, how great you are. It's about how you make people feel about themselves. Uh, and the only way you coast is downhill. So that's all my notes um, from the session. But I just thought that there was a lot of things in that that maybe you've heard before. I know I've heard before. 
But we all need a reminder on these things that if you're going to lead people, which every one of us is a leader, every single one on this call is a leader of some sort. Maybe you're like, well, I don't know what he's talking about leadership and I don't have a team yet. It's just me. Well, you, you might have some customers and if you're going to have customers, you're going to be leading people, right? Leading your customers. You're going to have coaches. And so you're going to need to lead people as a coach too. And so everyone on here is a leader and you've got to have these things to be able to be a leader. I think if I was to just summarize a little bit, um, first of all, you got to win in your head. You have to win in your head and you have to lead yourself first before you can lead other people. Okay. So you've got to be a, po you've got to be positive. You have to have the right mindset, that positive mindset, the one that makes the ship go forward. Which, uh, Jim Rohn talks about setting the sail. Your attitude is like the sail on a sailboat. And if you set the sail like this and the wind is going this way into the sail and it's like this, the boat goes nowhere. You have to change the attitude in order for it to work, right? So you've got to win in your head first. You've got to show up. You've got to be consistent. Every day you have to show up. You cannot be in, out, in, out. Uh, life turns on very small decisions. So when you make the decision to be negative today, you could make decisions that day in your negative mindset that will change the course of your life in a bad way. If you choose to be the one who is above that and making uh, positive decisions, you could change your life in a very positive way. It very small decisions. Um, don't take yourself too seriously. Um, you, it's not about you. It's about how you make other people feel. Big team, little me. The only way to coast is downhill. That's pretty much all I have. Uh, questions? Oh, I got a chat thing here. Oh, thank you. Great stuff, Ryan. Um, questions? You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Come on, somebody's got a question. Or, or a thought. Or a, hey, that's me. I, I really took this away from that. Who's got a takeaway? Who's got a question? Who's got a... Anything. Yay, kind of, kind of a, kind of statement. Say that again. I have kind of a statement a little bit. Um, you were talking about how we should not be negative and we should try to be consistent every day. Mm -hmm. I think that it, with that, though, that it's important to remember that we can relate to people when they get that way. Like we can say, hey, we were at that point in our life and, and we were, were there, but this is what I'm doing now that's affecting me in a positive way mm -hmm. so i think it's important to remember that that people are having those thoughts and to recognize that and to say this is what you can this is what can be better yeah I, so i totally agree with that i think um when we talk about not being negative uh i always forget to kind of to to kind of qualify what that means because what I'm not talking about and what he's not talking about when we're talking about being a positive person and not being a negative person, we're not talking about blowing smoke, you know, rainbows and sunshine everywhere. And um, my life is a complete disaster right now, but going on Facebook and going, oh, my life is so great. I'm a positive person. You know, like, that's not what we're talking about. That's not po being a positive person necessarily. Um, lying or blowing smoke is not the same thing. But, but the example that I always use to kind of try to explain it is when something's going wrong in my life, something that is hard, difficult, I don't, you know, I, I always say that because I know so many people have such more difficult lives than me. I hate to even complain, but when something is, is difficult for me and I want to post on Facebook about it, the way I post on Facebook about it is here's this difficult thing that's happening in my life and here's what I'm doing about it. So that's the positive side of things. It's not, there's nothing wrong with my life. I'm in, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good. That's not being positive so much as when, when something's bad in your life, you can talk about it. You can say, this is horrible. Like this thing happened to me and this is what I'm doing about it. And Hey, do any of my friends out there have advice for me in this difficult time? that's someone that you want to follow. That's someone that you want to look up to is someone who's willing to say, things are not great, but I'm going to do something about it. Here's what I think I'm going to do. Does anybody else have any advice from me? Because I respect you all as friends, right? That's a positive person. 
The other side, the negative people go on and rant about how horrible life is, right? They go, my life sucks. Hashtag FML. <laughs> and that's, that's it. They don't talk about how they're dealing with it. They don't ask for advice. Just bleh, here's my negative bleh, right? That's not someone that you're going to want to follow. That's not someone who's leading, right? So yeah, we do have to, we should really qualify what it means to be a positive versus a negative person. Don't lie. That's not being a positive person in the way that we're talking about. Other thoughts? Well, that's exactly what I meant is that being real, people are going to be inspired by something real, like mm -hmm. you saying, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm having this hard time, but I'm getting through it. And I find that people like asking questions on my journey saying, wow, this is really inspiring that you really switched yourself. It, it, I think that's exactly what I was saying is, is being real because people are going to relate to that. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And yet you can definitely do what you were talking about too, is when someone's having a hard time going on there and saying, I totally get that. I've had that before. And here's what I did you know, and being the positive influence on that person's life. I mean, depending on the situation, we can't cover every situation, obviously, <laughs> and tell you how to be a positive person versus a negative person. But it's really, it really starts with your mindset. What is your mindset? It's not about, it's not about um, necessarily faking it till you make it. Like if you're, if you're a bitter person and you just pretend to be a positive person on Facebook, that's not what we mean. We're talking about becoming a positive person, like actually changing your mind, not pretending, right? That's, those are different things. Who else got comments? There's more people on here. I know since I'm going to start calling on people. Oh, Brooke's smiling. She's like, don't call on me. Don't call on me. <laughs> Mike's right. on here. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, um, I appreciate y'all being on today. Um, oh, let's see. Emma says, have any of you seen the TikTok by Sean Anger called the happy secret to better work? No, I have not. I'll look that up. The Ted talk by Sean, Sean Acor, A-C-H-O-R called the happy secret to better work. I'll go look that up. Thank you. It's awesome. Excellent. What else we got? It's good to see you all. I just was sitting in leadership and I thought I should just jump on a call with you guys and, and uh, talk about this stuff. So um, let's see. Got another one here. So Luke Williams, making transition from follower to leader. Hmm. So you're asking me, how do you make the transition from follower to leader? Yeah. Okay, so I think, I think that's, you know, that's a good question. How do you make the transition from follower to leader? Um, I don't think that you actually do in the sense of maybe what you're thinking. I'm not sure exactly what you're thinking. But um, it's, it's most certainly not a switch that is flipped where you're like, I'm mostly a follower right now. Um, and then all of a sudden you're a leader like a month later. It just doesn't happen like that. I think about like when I started the Team Rhino page, the Team Rhino coaching page, and I started, you know, actually adding some coaches. And we were really more like Dave and Monica were the leaders and we were just this, you know, small team. And I really didn't do much leading. And I cannot place a particular point where that changed from me being the leader from Dave and Monica being the main leaders over my people to me being the leader. I, I don't really have a specific point where that happened. Um, <laughs> it, it was more that I took the, the things that I was doing with my customers and I just kind of applied the same thing to the team. So you kind of know how to lead your customers. Like Luke, you've been doing these biggest loser contests for a while and you kind of know how to lead those and what you need to talk to people about. But the, I think the main thing actually that he was talking about in this session was that people actually follow what you do, not what you say. So a lot of people think of leadership as like this right here. Uh, Brian's a leader because he called a team call and he got on and, you know, blah, blah, blah about leadership, right? It's not so much that. People followed me, especially in 2013 as a leader when I was going to make Elite because I was adding five to six coaches a month at least to Team Rhino. And I was making 20 to 30 success club points a month. 
So they were following what I was doing. We were, we were even as like, we had more people making success club in 2013 than we did in 2014 and 15. And part of that was because I was making success club 25 and success club 30 on a regular basis. And I was adding five to six coaches a month. And all I did was help other people do what I was doing. So if you want people to go from on your team to go from coach to Emerald coach, you need to go from Emerald coach to diamond coach. If you want people to go from making zero, one, two success club points a month to making success club five, then you need to show them a higher standard and you need to make success club 10 every month. And if you want people to, this is one, the one that hit me as I, as he was talking about that kind of stuff, I thought, okay, well, how does that apply to me? So I had posted yesterday about getting people to watch the eight minute video uh, for coaching opportunity. And it was like, get five people to watch this video. And it, it hit me then. And then it hit me again in this leadership thing that I've been doing all these webinars. We've been doing webinars every other week. And it's been a big push to invite to the webinar, invite to the webinar, invite to the webinar. And the level at which I personally have invited to the webinars has not been a leadership level of inviting to the webinars. I have invited to them. Have I? Yes, I have invited to them. I've had people sign up through them. But I haven't invited to the level that is leading a five to seven star diamond team to be inviting to the level that they need to be. So it's, it starts with what you do. So that's my thing is I need to be producing at the level that says to you guys, you can step up to this level, right? So if I'm, if I'm making success club five every month and inviting a couple people to every webinar, that's not enough for the whole team to be success club five and inviting a couple people to the webinar. It's the speed of the leaders, the speed of the pack, right? So if you want your team to do um, half of what you're doing, well, then put your, your level where it needs to be to get them to that level that you want them to be at, I guess. When I look back at 2013, that's what I've seen. Let's see, we've got a couple more chats here. Yeah, so, uh, so Luke, hopefully that helped a little bit, Luke. And then, uh, so that's correct. I've had several people come up to me and say, we're watching. Maybe they're not ready to move into their journey, but they're watching. Do not get down about no one responding to your posts. It is a marathon and it does take time. Hang in there, me included. Totally true. It, it, you, you, gotta, you gotta remember that it starts with what you actually do. If you want people to, to uh, do what you do, you've gotta do it on a higher level. So, any other questions or thoughts? Anybody have anything? You can unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey, Lisa. Oh, I hi. I tried to my hand, but you just ignored me. You didn't oh, let me lower that hand. Um, lower you were like, just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Go. No, I just, um, the biggest thing that I think about uh, when, when it comes to, to leadership and, you know, what, what you were saying as far as, you know, that it, it's not about me you know, and that, that, that's really important too, because I know I get in the, in the mindset of thinking, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? How can I motivate my team? How can I, you know, um, do new things? How can I, and I'm always thinking, how can, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do to, you know, and, and then the focus becomes on me and, you know, not on my team. And instead of, you know, um, thinking about um, what we can do as a team and and what kind of things need to happen and and uh, and then the other thing is what you just talked about um, being that example and doing and, and I and I think about that even with my parenting you know style as my kids were growing up um, you know and now that they're adults and I look back and, and I see the kind of people that they are now and it has very little to do with what I taught them with 
what I said to them has everything to do with, and the things that really sunk in with them um, as adults now, and the things that really cemented and turned them into the people that they are today are not the things that I told them, but the things that I showed them. Because those were the things that expressed most value to them, uh, is if I said it, then okay, she might mean it. But if I actually did it day in and day out and constantly and they saw me and that, that it was important enough to me that it was part of my daily activity, then it meant something. And so instead of thinking, how can I motivate my team? How can I motivate my team? You know, what can I do to be the type of person and to be the kind of leader that I would expect them to be? So that's just my takeaway. Right. I like it. Yep. That's a good analogy with the parenting, you know, is you, you can't, you can't go around your house, house saying, uh, you know, saying the F word yourself and then saying to your kids, don't say curse words, right? Like that, it doesn't work like that, right? You can't just say, you're not allowed to say curse words, but I do it all day long, right? It's, it's about what you actually do. They emulate what you actually do. And if you live your life this certain way, they're more likely to live their life that certain way unless they're influenced by another person, someone at school or someone else, that they end up following their example instead, right? It's they follow what they, they mimic what other people do, not necessarily what other people say. And if you're the one who's influencing them with what you do, then they do what you do, right? So you want your kids to do what you do? to do the thing that you want them to do, then do that thing yourself. And it's the same thing with your business, with your fitness. If you want other people to do what you're doing with fitness, then you got to do it. You can't just say P90X is the way, drink Shakeology every day, and you're not willing to drink it yourself. This is why we tell everybody to be on HD, right? Because if you want people to do HD Shakeology, you have to be on it yourself. You can't tell people that that's the right way if you're not willing to do it yourself, right? So... All good stuff. Um, somebody else had their hand up, though, uh, but they're gone. And it just said Shazam on it, and so I don't know who <laughs> whose name it was, actually. All right. Yeah, you're welcome, Mike. Thank you all for being on. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. i got to get to some other stuff. But thank you guys for taking some time in the middle of the day like this to do this. And uh, hopefully there was some helpful stuff there, and we can go out and hammer it. I think, you know, my main focus is going to be doing the inviting that I'm telling you all to do on a higher level because I'm just not. I'm honestly just not inviting people on the level that I'm hoping that you guys are and that's not leadership. So that's my thing and so um, we're going to maybe start some things in the team group about accountability for inviting. You know, if we're going to have these webinars or we're going to use the webinars we've already recorded or we're going to use videos, we're going to have some, some things where we're going to get together and say, we're going to invite this many people and I'm going to, I'm going to list the names of the people that I invited to watch this video, not their whole name. Just I invited Sarah S to watch this video and John B and so and so, you know, that we don't have to like <laughs> tell the actual people, but just to say, these are the people that I invited. These are real people. I invited them to watch this video. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks everybody for being on. And, uh, uh, hopefully there'll be some more announcements tomorrow that I'll get to share with you guys. Um, hopefully you're excited uh, about the new Shakeology flavor and all that stuff coming out in the first part of uh, 2016. And I'm sure there'll be more tomorrow. So stay tuned. Stop recording.